Welcome to the Inside Java podcast, a podcast about everything Java brought to you directly by the folks at Oracle who makes Java. My name is David Delabasse, and I'm your host for this episode, episode 27. Java One recently took place in Las Vegas, and while I was there, I had the opportunity to record several conversations, and this is one of those. This one is with Kevin Rushworth, who works on JavaFX. So enjoy the show. Uh, so Kevin, first, can you, well, first, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Kevin Rushforth. I'm the project lead for JavaFX. I've been at Oracle for a number of years working on client technologies. Okay. Um, so I saw that uh, during Java 1, you did a presentation titled JavaFX 19 and beyond. So does that mean that, uh, well, JavaFX is not dead yet? Oh, JavaFX is definitely not dead. <laughs> Never has been. We've... Uh, been working on JavaFX now for a dozen years, and we've produced many releases of JavaFX. Oracle and other companies now are helping produce it to uh, add new features to it, fix bugs, keep it relevant and vibrant. Okay, cool. Now, um, something that is always a bit, uh, well, unclear to me is what is the relation, if any, between JavaFX and OpenFX? Can you clarify that? Oh, sure. OpenJFX is the name that we use as the project name under the OpenJDK umbrella. So as uh, if any of you are familiar with the OpenJDK, uh, it, it's a list of projects. So JDK is the main project, but there's projects like Loom and Panama. OpenJFX is the project where we develop the JavaFX APIs. So usually when I speak about it, I talk about JavaFX unless I'm talking about the OpenJDK project. Yeah, okay, but basically it's the same thing. So yeah. OpenJFX is the place where it's uh, where JavaFX uh, is developed. Absolutely. Okay, so whenever you say JavaFX, you mean that it's developed uh, under OpenJFX, so right. in open source. Okay, so can you, well, it's an OpenJDK project, so that means that basically uh, you are following all the development principle of OpenJDK, right? Uh, yes, exactly. We. Uh, recently, in fact, we actually uh, were one of the first ones to move our project to GitHub from Mercurial, right. and JDK is now there as well. So all of the open JDK projects, the source code, they all follow the same processes for getting access to it. Uh, you sign a contributor agreement, you're able to contribute. It's not just limited to things that Oracle or other big companies can produce. Okay. And we follow, as you say, the same set of development processes. Okay, I think you said something important. So it's not just Oracle, right? No, it's not. In fact, if, if you look at uh, JavaFX today, we get contributions from Oracle, from Gluon, from a number of other smaller companies, and just some individual developers who are interested and passionate about JavaFX, and they want to make it better. Yeah, okay, cool. And I think that uh, it's fair to say that Gluon has been uh, helping a lot Oh, absolutely. In fact, Johan Voss from Gluon is a co-lead of the JavaFX project, along with myself. Okay. And the two of us together help uh, guide the API. Uh, we're stewards of the API of JavaFX. And Gluon is uh, right now one of the big producers of JavaFX binaries. They've been producing JavaFX binaries for the last several years and continue to do so. So they have been in instrumental on getting where we are today with... Absolutely. Okay. Okay, that's cool. And also, it's funny because I just realized that you were one of the guinea pig when uh, we transitioned to Project Scara, so from Mercurial to GitHub. Absolutely. So the JavaFX was the first big project okay. to transition, <laughs> and we, we paved that ground. <laughs> Thanks a lot. But it works. It, it right. works really well. Okay. Can we discuss a little bit about uh, what's new? Because... Well, maybe first, uh, let's, maybe you should recap what are the big features that have been done recently in FX or what were the highlights? Sure. So, uh, first of all, maybe I can start with a quick overview of, of the features of JavaFX and then talk about some of the recent ones, uh, as, as you asked about. Yep. So, JavaFX is, at its heart, a UI controls toolkit. But we don't stop there. So it's got a rich set of UI controls, buttons, tables, combo boxes, the kinds of things you would normally expect to see. Uh, we use CSS styling for our apps, so it, you can very easily style your app to get a different look and feel. Uh, it's got a set of layout containers. It also, though, has built-in charting, 
So we've got some several different chart types. We have 2D and 3D graphical shapes, text, images, filter effects. But also we, we allow you to embed media or web content right into your application. And it can be browsable web content, not just static. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Swing Toolkit, which is also a UI toolkit that uh, Oracle produces and is part of the OpenJDK project, yep. uh, we can interoperate with that. So you can take your JavaFX content and put it in a Swing app. You can take your Swing content and put it in a JavaFX app. We have two-way uh, interoperation. Uh, JavaFX has uh, properties, bindings, animation, a, a number of other basic features like that. And it's, it's a very rich toolkit. Yeah. So recently, and by recently I mean the last few months, we're on the same train model that JDK is on. So every six months we come out with a new release. So each release doesn't have a huge number of new features, but we're always adding some little things. So in, in JavaFX 17, we added uh, an additional 3D light type. We added spotlights. We also added the ability to load images from data URIs, which is very powerful, and people have been asking that for a while. Um, in JavaFX 18, we added support in our media package for H.265 uh, media, which is a really important media. And then in JavaFX 19, we added support for HLS live streaming for that media type. So we're always adding a, a, a few smaller features. Another thing we added in JavaFX 19, which came from the community, so it's kind of interesting to get uh, a feature that was actually very well done. And it takes a lot of effort to do this. And that's why we're, we're very pleased when somebody actually is willing to put in the effort. And that was to take our property bindings and add Fluent support, much like they have for the uh, streams and optional in JDK. They added map and flat map capabilities to the bindings. Uh, so that, that's, that's mostly what we've had in the last two or three releases. OK, so that's cool. So that clearly means and shows that uh, uh, JavaFX continue to evolve. And, and, and also, well, one of the challenges I guess you are facing is that you also have to cope with the landscape that is also evolving and the media landscape is evolving, right? I exactly. So we're always looking at what new codecs for media are there. Uh, we, we've also been asked to look at some other new features specifically for media. Uh, we're looking at adding uh, subtitles for closed captioning. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we're going to, uh, as we talked about, also add a couple of new formats. But eventually we might look into uh, media recording. That, that's something we don't have as a capability that people have asked for. Okay, okay, that's nice. Now, something that is also uh, new and that you have announced at Java One is the fact that uh, we're going to produce JavaFX build. Can you talk a little bit about that too? Um, yeah, I can. When, when we first released JavaFX back in the JDK 7 timeframe, it was available as an optional bundled library from Oracle. In JDK 8, we actually put it in as an integral part of it. Um, but then with the modularization, we realized, well, it's not part of the you know, open JDK builds. It was only for Oracle JDK. We needed to modularize it anyway. And we did it in such a way that you can now take a JavaFX build and run it with any JDK from any vendor. And Gluon has been producing those binaries. Hmm. What we're doing now and what we announced at Java 1 is that Oracle will also start producing those binaries. Uh, what we found is that you go to jdk.java.net, which a lot of people do to get our early access binaries that we publish for JDK 20 and 19 before that, and there's no JavaFX there. Well, now there is. So now you can go and get JavaFX 20, JDK 20 early access, and get them from the same place, download them, and use them together. And they're tested to work together and everything is uh, much easier for developers that way. When JDK 20 GA is in March, we'll do the same for JavaFX 20. So that means that right now we have JavaFX 20 early access build, right? Yes, on jdk.java.net, yes. And uh, in March, when 20 will GA, we'll have a GA JavaFX build? Right. And we will also have 21 early access build. That's right. We'll have 21 early access probably slightly before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we fork. That basically means that you are aligned 100% with OpenGDK. Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. Yes. Now, uh, something else that I wanted to uh, discuss with you, um, and that has been highlighted as one of the weaknesses of the Java platform. Well, Java is not very visual, and that is a problem uh, when you want to uh, jump into the, into the platform. So as a new developer, if you want to learn uh, computer science, 
if you are young, you want to see basically what you are producing. So you want something that is highly visual and so on. So is JavaFX able to help on that front? Uh, yeah, we actually are looking at ways we can even make it help more on that front. What, what we're looking at doing is realizing that there's a barrier to get started with the, with the Java language and with JavaFX and other visualizations in the Java ecosystem. And so what we want to do is we want to reduce the friction to get started. So we're, we're looking at how can we empower educators, students, people who are just new to the platform to be able to quickly and easily come up with compelling content where you can learn Java and at the same time learn how to you know, make it visual, to produce something visual. And, and if you look at what we did in the JDK several releases ago, we put out JShell. Yep. And that, that's one thing that was missing is, that, okay, you have to edit the file. Oh, now I have to go find my compiler and compile that file. Now I run that file. That, that's just too, too much friction to get started. So JShell allows you to do a lot more interactive trial and error things. We're bringing that power to JavaFX as well, or rather bringing JavaFX to that and looking at some utilities beyond that to even make it better because now that we have a visual API like that, we can, uh, we can make something that is very visual, easy to get started with, and easy to do. You know, charting is, for example, one of the things we're looking at. But anyway, we're working on some of these innovations as uh, demos. I demoed one of those ideas at Java One. Okay. Now, uh, I want to go back on one of the points that you mentioned. So Java is 27 years old. Uh -huh. JavaFX was not there since the beginning. So we had before that AWT and Swing. So what is the relation between Swing and JavaFX, which is a newer visual layer? Well, as you said, Swing has been there, and, and the Java 2D and AWT libraries have been there since the beginning. They've, they've evolved as well. They've gotten to the point where that's a pretty complete, uh, mature API. Uh, you can still use it, and a lot of uh, apps do. Uh, we're putting our innovation more in the JavaFX front, but you can use them together. So you can take a JavaFX app and put them as a panel inside a Swing app. Uh, you can take a Swing application and put it as a node in a JavaFX scene graph. Okay, so it, it works both ways. Yeah. So that means that if you have an existing Swing application, you can uh, enhance it uh, with JavaFX. Yeah, in fact, a, a lot of the reasons people want to do that is they have this existing Swing app. As you say, I don't want to rewrite it, yeah. but I want to put media content in there or browsable web content or charts. You can do all of that or animation or any of a number of other things. Okay, cool. We have the early access uh, 20 uh, JavaFX build. So what is your call to action? Well, just, just may, maybe taking on that point. Yeah, our first call to action is we do have that build. Please download it, download it, test it, report problems. You can either do that by filing a bug at bugreport.java.com or you can join the mailing list. The OpenJFX dev mailing list is one of the OpenJDK mailing lists that anybody can join. And that's where we discuss how to evolve the JavaFX APIs and what bugs need to be fixed. So do that. And if you're of a mind to contribute, there's a little bit more effort involved. We, we don't want drive-by contributions, yep. but we're happy to take bug reports and bug fixes from people who are interested in and dedicated to making the platform better. Now, I'm, go I'm going to quickly mention something. So you said that people uh, should download and test early access builds. So you mentioned multiple ways of reporting uh, potential issue. Another way to do that mm -hmm. is to join the OpenGDK quality outreach program. So if you have an open source project that is using JavaFX, basically we're asking those projects to test early access build. And whenever there is an issue, we make sure that it gets in the right hands directly. So that's, a, I would say, a shortcut way to uh, report bugs. And the idea is that we want those bugs to be uh, identified and resolved before we go GA. So that's another way to help to shape the Java platform and JavaFX too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you mentioning that. That does sound like a useful way to do it. Yeah. So, Kevin, anything else that you'd like to mention? No, I think we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, we're, we're very excited about the future of JavaFX. We continue to evolve it, and we're, we're looking forward to improving it and getting it into people's hands so that they can do interesting things with it. Yeah, 
I have to admit that it's exciting to see more investment being done into JavaFX. And personally, I've been following JavaFX for quite some time, and I'm really excited with what's going on. Thank you. I'm glad to have been on here. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Bye.